But let me tell you something. Before we get into the details, let's go back to basics. What is the role of government? Specifically, what is the role of the city government in nation building? You know, it's not, it's not in the local government code. It's not even in the constitution. If you were to ask all our senators what the role of government is, I don't think you'll get the same answer from all the senators. But I'm the leader of BOPK, and I'm the one who uh, guides and gives us a common sense of purpose and direction. So to us in BOPK, the role of government is to provide a service. And this is where we get into a bit of a debate especially with lawyers, because the lawyers will say the role of government is to govern. And I say, no, it's to provide the service. And they say, no, it's to govern. And I insist it's to provide the service. And they end up telling me, can you please spell government? See, it's to govern. And I still say, you're wrong. If you don't believe me, Let's ask the people, let's put it to a vote. And you ask the people, do you like to be governed or do you like government to provide a service? And I said, you're not going to win that argument. Because to me, what the people want is service. So what kind of service should the government provide? Essentially, services which someone cannot get from the private sector. For example, Everyone can put a, a light bulb outside in the street in front of their house, but no one wants to do it, so government has to do it. Everyone can clean the street in front of their store, but no one wants to do it, so government has to do it. We in BOPK think this way, hmm? provide a service. So if there is a problem somewhere, like in education, oh, we have many private schools, but there are some that cannot avail of education, so government has to provide it. Medical, there are many private hospitals here, but there are some who simply cannot avail. So that's where government comes in, to fill in that deficiency. Practically everything in our concept in BOPK is to provide a service, because the private sector is either unable or unwilling to do the job. So, San Miguel Corporation is not willing to pro provide the Philippine Air Force, so government has to do it. Huh? SM is not willing to sponsor a go uh, an embassy in the United Nations or in New York, so government has to do it. That's the role and justification of government, so that our country can function complete. You know? Now, so if we agree that if we agree that the role of government is to provide the service, then it does not become an issue of policy. When you read the local government code, it's an issue of policy, which means power sharing, sharing the money. This is your share, this is my share, this is your responsibility, this is my responsibility. We in BOPK do not think that way. We always see which services can we provide. And as so, uh, it's not a policy problem, it's a management problem. How do we provide the service that's needed? How do we do it cheaply? How, we do, how can we do it efficiently? How can we do it on a timely basis? And how can we do it with transparency? That is our central core. That is what BOPK is all about. So if you uh, want, you're from Ateneo de Manila. There is a book that is written uh, by the Ateneo Graduate School of Business called Blue Way. Uh, this was written a few years ago when I was still mayor. 
and they cited uh, 10 models, 10 models of outstanding leadership and management services. And one of those 10 models, you had others like Banco de Oro, and basically leading companies in the private sector. But one of those models is the Cebu City Mayor's Office. And I'm very proud that I was able to form a special function and a model that was even cited by the Ateneo Graduate School of Business. We formed a special team in City Hall, which we call the Mayor's Management Team. And there were basically about 80 of us. And I trained each and every one of them. Now, what makes the mayor's management team uh, unique is that you cannot just join it regardless of who recommends you to join it. All 80 of them have to be cum laude graduates. The only exception is summa cum laude or magna cum laude. But if you're not a cum laude graduate, you cannot join. I don't care if Cardinal Vidal or whoever will endorse you. If you have a cum laude graduate and you're not from Cebu, I don't care either. We just need somebody who knows how to think. And so we put this together and it attracted the attention of Ateneo de Manila and cited it as one of the 10 top models of the country. Now, the name of the book, by the way, is Blue Way. Now, what we do is we just look at the delivery of services and how things can be done. One of the biggest problems in government is red tape. You'd be surprised. Uh, some people say the biggest problem in government is corruption. You know, sometimes I think that's not exactly true. Red tape is a bigger loss to the in uh, the use of people's funds than corruption. Oh, there's a lot of corruption, no question about it. Maybe they're running neck and neck, but red tape is basically a major issue. If you were to run a project, like for example, uh, the building of a Mactan Bridge, okay? Of course, you, most of your expenses are construction costs, cement, this and that. But there is a portion there that's called administrative costs. You know? This has not, nothing to do with the materials. This has nothing to do with anything else. But this has to do with the job of administering the off-field offices, the telephone bills, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. In a construction project, 10% is very high. But you know, in government like City Hall, Administrative costs, if you were to spend 100 pesos, administrative costs can be as high as 80 pesos. So you're spending 80 pesos just to get the 20 pesos done. And that to me is a major cost. And this requires uh, a tremendous amount of reinvention and rethinking and revaluation. So when you talk, when you talk about a platform of government, you first find out what services do the people want. Hmm? There's jobs, there's infrastructure, there's the barangays, there's the women, and there are different sectors with their different concerns. And then you find out what are your resources and you just try to allocate it so that whatever you have is spent as wisely as possible. But the people also have to know once the last peso is spent, that's it, okay? We're not going to go beyond that. We shouldn't be going into debt because that will build up into the future. So you see, we in our group, we're very different. <laughs> we're, people think this way and we actually start from the people themselves and what they need. And then we work backwards. So if there is a problem, say, in one particular locality, locality or one particular barangay, the first one, from a management standpoint, the first one who should try to solve that problem is who is the government's representative in that area? Who is closest there? 
maybe it's a barangay counselor, maybe it's a barangay tanon. It starts from there, and if you can solve it, it goes back to the barangay official. And if the barangay official cannot solve it, it goes up to some division in City Hall. And if he can solve that, it goes to the department head. And if the department head can, can solve it, it goes to the mayor. In other words, the job of the mayor is to do all the things that the other people cannot or unwilling to do. That's why he's the mayor. That's why he gets the highest salary, because he takes the toughest assignment. So I, my orientation is basically how to get things done. First, what you need, what needs to be done, and how to get it done. What needs to be done has to be answered by the people themselves. So the formation of a program of government should essentially come from the people themselves. And if you want to do it strictly according to theory, the first thing you should do what's the first job of government is to listen. Don't talk, just listen. And listen to the different sectors and you prioritize what their concerns are. First, you have to find out if there's a problem. Second, you have to define that problem. Third, you have to quantify that problem. And once you do so, once you have it all lined up, then you allocate how are we going to solve this problem? So let's put it in real terms, okay? Let's say we're, I call a meeting of members of the educational sector. I will have a workshop with them and we will ask them first, you know, in your sector, it is now the year 2016, how would you like your sector to be like 10 years from now? 2026. Now the key here is they have to spend the whole half day discussing it, but they, there is one basic rule. They have to quantify their answers. It should not be, it should be very good. You cannot quali quantify that. It cannot be like, we should be the best. You cannot quantify that. You quantify it by saying, what should be the standard of literacy? in 226. In other words, you have a number, okay? Now the next question they will be asked is, where are we today? You said you want 99% of the people to be able to read and write. Where are we today? Oh, 99, maybe now we're 91%. So what's the difference? The difference is, 98 minus 91 is 7 percent. So we have to have a 7 percent gain over a period of 10 years. How are we going to accomplish this? So for this year, uh, how are we going to achieve that 1 percent gain? What are, then we go to another study and say, what are the obstacles that will prevent us from accomplishing that 1 percent? You see, what I'm really trying to say is that in our style, we're more like technicians. We're not philosophers. We don't like to argue because you're bad and I'm good. Yeah, this guy is better than that. You know, these kind of arguments are endless. It can go on forever. And there's no common denominator. And you just end up grandstanding and everyone's trying to outdo themselves. You know, helping the people is a management problem, is our orientation in Bando Osmania. It's not anything else but that. We translate it all to a management problem. 